up everybody you're watching damien after dark where we will be talking bad versus wild this week's episode that came in on the zeus network if you care about it go ahead and get nestled in because we're going to be recapping the episode all right now before we begin make sure you subscribe to the channel like this video get in the comment section and leave me your thoughts and opinions on the episode and don't forget if you want to join the Damien After Dark movement, in the description box below will be ways that you can donate using PayPal, Cash App, Venmo, and Zelle. I will also post my Amazon wish list for those that choose to take that route, okay? Thank you guys for the support and the love. If you choose to leave a super chat, please be mindful that YouTube will take 50% of the money that you donate and tip us creators, all right? Thank you guys for the love, support, donations subscribing, likes, comments, all that. I appreciate it from the bottom of my cold, cold heart, okay? Um, so I'm over Bad versus Wild. I don't know about y'all. I'm just ready for this show to end. I feel like it's ran its course already. Um, just like a lot of these Zeus shows, they flop. They're not that great. Um, this one, I mean, they had some interesting episodes. I think the most interesting Bad versus Wild episodes was like, Baddies versus the Cabaret, Baddies versus Bad Girls Club. Other than that, I really, I didn't really care for it. Now, this week's episode was the season one, One More Chance Girls versus the season two, One More Chance Girls. I've told you guys before, I've, um, I didn't, I've never seen One More Chance. I think I started watching Zeus when Jocelyn's Cabaret season one came around which was a few years ago. Um, I didn't get on the Zeus bandwagon when One More Chance started. But I heard it was a great show. I don't understand why he never got a season three because all the fan feedback and reviews that I saw, it was a good show. And people say, where is season three? Where is season three? But I think Zeus has been so caught up in the baddies world and everything baddies, bad boy, you know, type stuff and Jocelyn's Cabaret too that they kind of forgot about their shows that kind of got them started like One More Chance. So I would like to see them give Chance one more chance and do a season three. You know what I'm saying? Um, so yeah, we've got the one more chance girl, season one, two girl, season one girl, season two girls. You got Yasmin, which is the team captain, and Yodala, which is the other team captain. I think both of these girls won their seasons. Um, so I don't know a lot of these girls, so y'all bear with me. But I know that some of y'all know them because some of these girls have appeared on other episodes of Bad vs. Wild. And I had no clue that who they were. And y'all told me, Damien, they're from One Mo Chance. Like Stony, Stony, for instance. She's been on Bad vs. Wild. They've used her like three times. Stony done made her a good little bag coming up here making this easy check. This would be an easy check. Listen, that's why I said if I was the bad boys... Or I was the Bobby's I Love You Purr Boys. I would be pissed. Because it's like Zeus just completely forgot about them. They only cast girls for this show. I don't know why. Unless you're a girl, a man, uh, you know, unless you're trans or you're a guy that dresses like a girl or put on a wig. They're not going to, you are not. You can't be on the show. And I feel like it was a missed opportunity for the bad boys. Like I, I said this on the last review. For the bad boys and the Bobby's boys, it was a missed opportunity for them um, to, to, to be on this show and make them a little quick change, you know? Now, the season one girls, Yasmin's team, a couple of them looked a mess. Whew, the ones on Mangina's team, like, like, bless her heart, uh, what was her name? Plastica. <laughs> Plastica and what was the other girl's name? Um, believable believable i wasn't believing it baby i couldn't believe it <laughs> i'm like oh okay okay the one with the orange hair y'all know who i'm talking about so but we had two performers tonight now Jaden alexis blue faces girl and then matt cash for some reason, Zeus loves to shove Matt Cash down our throat. This 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 white boy that raps. We don't need another Eminem. We're good. You know, this 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 Mr. Vanilla Bean can go. Um, I'm good. 
you know, I'm, I'm, the music doesn't have much substance. Everything is bad, bad, baddie, she a baddie, bad, bad girl, bad, bad. Like, I'm tired. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm not trying to be picky or mean or just, you know, nitpick. But they shove this Matt Cash guy down our throat so much. Like, he sings the theme song. He's been on Bad Boys. We see him um on the show, like, performing here. Like, I, like, like unless he's going to be a cast member, unless he's going to be on Bad Boys, or he's going to, like, we, we don't care about his music. I'm sorry. We don't. What Matt Cash song are you playing? Do you like Matt Cash? What are you buying tickets to a Matt Cash show? No shade. Trace your dreams, Matt Cash. But Zeus, we're tired of it. Okay. With all due respect. I told y'all they were running out of musical guests last week. Did I not tell you? I said you can tell they ran out of like their heavy hitters. Cause at first they had what? Bia. They had Saucy Santana. They had um who was did they have Cash Doll? Asian Doll, maybe. I don't know. They had a few good, you know, a few heavier, heavier hitters than Jaden Alexis and Matt Cash. <laughs> and no shade, Matt Cash, he just just like lemon pepper, he gives me cornball vibes. Like they're corny. They're corny men. Like you can talk they're, like it's always these 40-year-old 40 40 plus year old men trying like I'm bad banging bitches fucking bitches I'm you know popping popping Molly smoking blood like you're not 25 you're not like and Matt Cash you look like you don't pay child support either then they got Jaden Alexis Jaden Alexis also opens the show um she out there performing I'm weak as fuck now listen I like Jaden Alexis, okay? At first, yes, look, we all laughed about, you know, we all clowned her on the internet when Blueface was part posting her botched BBL and the whole Blueface and Krishan drama was going on and Jaden was involved. He was laughing and clowning them, right? But I watched the interview with Jay. If you haven't watched the interview with Jason Lee and Blueface and Jaden Alexis, you should go watch that interview because I saw a different side of Jaden Alexis and she is so much more mature and just, you know, more put together than Krishan is. Krishan is like a hot mess. And Jaden Alexis can sit there and have a conversation with you without cussing you out and wanting to fight you. So seeing that interview, I, you know, I, I, I liked her. Do I think she's the best performer? No. But hey, her music slaps, right? We can't lie, but everybody was everybody had that song. I'm a bad little bitch, and I'm slipped like a Barbie. Hips, lips, ass in a cart. I'm his fave motherfucker. Hello, motherfucker, motherfucker. Everybody had that playing on their stories. Last summer, last fall, whenever. So we gotta give her tens on that, right? Now the first challenge that they had to do. Now we're gonna move through this episode pretty quickly because, like I said, I'm a little over this show. It's a little repetitive with the challenges and what they do. So we're just gonna kind of move through it um, for those that care and want to hear about it. Now the first challenge was actually a different challenge, which I appreciate that that they try to change the challenges up and they don't try to keep the same ones each and every episode. And this challenge was kind of cute, you know. Of course, it's sexual. All the challenges are sexual, but. The girls had to, like, ha have, like, imagine a fanny pack, but instead of a fanny pack, it was, like, a box. If you watched, you know what I'm talking about. A box with these little bouncy balls in it and with a hole in the box. And they had to shake their ass, and the person that got all the balls out of their box first won that challenge, right? So they're shaking their ass, trying to release the balls. And I, th I thought that challenge was kind of cute. It was something different, right? Cool. We're going to give him that. Now, does man Jonna annoy y'all like he annoy me? He gives me Sydney Star vibes. And I say he because someone on the show tonight said that man Jonna said himself that he's a man. He doesn't identify as a woman, apparently. He's just a man. I guess he's just a man that likes to dress in women's clothing and wear wigs and lashes and stuff. Okay, cool. Cool. Um... Now, during the Keep It a Stack challenge, you know, that's the challenge where you get to confront somebody on like a truth or dare. Is it true that you do, 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 right? On the Keep It a Stack challenge, Mangina asks Yodala, is it true that your baby daddy is here in the audience to see Yasmin? I said, okay, leave it to Mangina to wake it the fuck up. 
Because listen, I'm gonna be real with y'all. I don't care for Mangina. He's annoying. But they knew what they were doing, I guess, calling him in. Because without him in this episode, I guess it would have been a little bit boring. He got in there and woke it up. He, he got the drama going. Um, even though he gives me Sydney Star vibes, he does. At least he starts the drama a little more authentically. Where Sydney comes off inauthentic and desperate and thirsty and, and, and just all over the place. Um, now, Yasmin says, I don't know. Let's see. Ask him. Ask him. I'm like, girl. That's not the answer you want to give. If somebody told me, you know, I heard your man was here to see him, I'm not going to say, why don't you ask him that? No, bitch, because it's not true. I'm going to say, you heard a motherfucking lie. My man ain't here for nobody but me, bitch. Nice try. Nice motherfucking try. But it seems true based off of Yodala's reaction, right? Um, it, and I don't even know Yasmin. I don't know Yodala. I don't even know this entire situation. I'm coming into this as a new viewer. But it seemed like what... Mangina was saying about Yodala's man was true because her reaction like if it wasn't true you wouldn't have really gave a fuck or really cared that much but and then her comebacks Yodala's come like Yodala, Yodala is just a pretty face that's pretty much it from what I saw because I've heard of her name but I've never really watched her before so watching her I'm like she's really just a pretty face because Mangina was you know saying all this shit and she didn't really have any comebacks like you, uh, uh, Yodala said, you wear fake purses. You wear fake. I'm like, that's not a read. That's not a read. Some, I mean, some of y'all's favorite rappers, favorite actresses, actors, reality stars wear fake purses. They say, hell, it's smarter to buy fake bags because they say rich people actually buy fake bags because that's how they got a lot of money. They don't invest in a bunch of designer shit. I don't know. I don't buy, I never bought a fake bag, but Yodala was trying to clown Mangina for buying fake bags. The read didn't stick to me. Yodala, call me, baby. I'll teach you how to read. Um. Now, one of the girls on the opposite team of Mangina asked him i guess this was she thought she ate i guess she thought she was reading but she was like is it true that you be fucking and sucking on football players like that was some kind of read girl you gave manjana an opportunity to lie because manjana was like no comment no comment i don't speak on that you gave that man a chance to lie because that was the perfect opportunity for him to be a stunt queen and stunt and act like he's sleeping with football players by being like, oh, I can't comment. No comment. Ain't no football players tapping that. I'm sorry. I'm Maybe. Listen. Maybe. But I just don't see it. I'm sorry. No shade. If I'm a football player and I got money and access, the last thing I'm trying to type or not type. The last thing I'm trying to tap is man fucking Gina. Okay. Um. Shit. Anybody trying to tap that fish fry? Uh, excuse me. Oh my god. How rude of me. Now. The reason why I really think whatever Mangina had to say about Yodala's man was true is because when man uh, when Yodala was walking off the stage, Mangina said, um, "You can't keep, you can't even keep your man." Or no, what no no um, <laughs> Mangina either said something like, "You can't you can't keep your man," or um, "You can't." Why are you trying to fight me? Why don't you try to fight your man back? He's the one who beat your ass, right? He said some things along those lines. And when he said some things along those lines, Yodala ran back on the stage, bitch, and charged Mangina, was trying to fight Mangina, kicking Mangina, or trying to at least. Security was holding her back. And I'm like, now see, this the shit we be talking about right here, because baby girl, and if you would have knocked Mangina upside the head and Mangina would have knocked you right back, it would have been, oh, this faggot in a wig just hit me. Oh, this queer and a motherfucking, this, this man that wants to be a woman just attacked me. That's the shit she would be saying. So why are we putting our hands on men? Don't put your hand, don't put yourself in a man's position, sweetheart. 
Then we see Yodelis Van try to run on stage. We see her little entourage, her friends trying to run on stage, trying to do some shit. I guess, you know, they trying to follow her lead and trying to attack Mangina, which I, which I didn't agree with. Like, come on now. We can sit up here and read all day and have a verbal, a verbal match all day. But then again, this is the Zeus Network, right? I just think it gets it gets murky when men and women are fighting. Even though I don't think I don't know. I don't just say I don't think Mangina would really hurt her, but then again, listen. You never know. Some of these motherfuckers, you can't underestimate no gay bitch. Unless gays know how to throw the fuck down, okay? Um yeah, yeah, Yodela should have just went off, walked off the stage, collected her check, and went home. Because it's giving that your man wants to fuck Yasmin. That's what it's giving, Yodela. Now, Jaden Alexis closes the show with her super mega hit. I'm a bad little bitch and I'm slipped like a Barbie. Hips, lips, ass in a car. I'm a fame motherfucker. Hello, motherfucker. 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 Um, so we see her perform that, which, you know, that's the only song of her I know. I like the song. I think Jaden, her music is good. It's catchy. I just think she needs to work on her stage presence because she's a little stiff. You know, she just does this. This my bit. This my dick. This my dick. This my dick. A bad little bitch and I'm stiff like a bark. Hips, lips. And it looks like she doesn't have much of a neck. No shade. Like I'm just being real. So it doesn't look right. Like, and then the, and then she's got these big sunglasses. Let's just. And then let me get the mic. I'm a bad little bitch and I'm stiff like a barbie. Hips, lips, ass in a car. You have a fade, motherfucker. Hello, motherfucker. 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 What the fuck? This my dick. This my dick. This my dick. You know what I'm saying? That's what it looked like. Like it was just very like she just looked very uncomfortable, tight. Like 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 she just wanted to like it looked like when she got backstage and took everything off, it was like oh, oh you know what I mean? Like I don't know. And we and you know, listen, I'm not gonna sit up here and dog Jaden and her BBL, but I like when I saw pictures of Jaden Alexis and Blueface in high school because you know they met in high school and they dated and that's when they had a baby and all that. She was such a beautiful girl before she went and got the BBL and all that done. Hollywood fucked her up, I think, and and, and made her feel like she had to go get an ass. And it just, you know, it made I feel like it made her body dispor disproportionate. But that's not my business, you know. Anyway, um. Let me know what you guys thought about this episode. I told you we were going to kind of move through this episode quicker than normal because it really, really wasn't a lot going on. Like I told you guys, I'm ready for this to wrap up. Um, if you're interested in transforming Roly, the new spinoff show that of Roly following her weight loss journey, we are recapping that right now. Episode one is available on my channel. If you have not seen that yet, I'll also be uploading the Baddies East or the Baddies Caribbean teaser i'll be doing a video on the on that stay tuned for that it's coming as well and the baddies caribbean after show will be going live on my podcast damien after dark season four coming right here to youtube and wherever you get your podcast we'll be talking all things baddies caribbean on my podcast all season long so you don't want to miss that it's coming right here on the channel make sure you turn on your post notifications by clicking that bell icon click the subscribe button click the thumbs up button down there and like the video that helps me get into the algorithm so we can continue to grow over here and more beautiful people like yourself can find us uh, last but not least, if you want to join the Damien After Dark movement, in the description box below will be ways that you can donate using PayPal, Cash App, Venmo, and Zelle. I'll also post my Amazon wish list for those that choose to take that route. Please be mindful that if you leave a super chat through YouTube, YouTube will take 50% of the earnings that you guys donate, okay? I love you guys for supporting me. Please remember that you're special, that you're loved, and that you woke up today for a reason, all right? It's never a bad life. It's just a bad day. So power through those bad days, okay? Power through them and put yourself first, always. Love yourself and put yourself first, always. And take care of yourself, all right? You promise? 
Love you. We'll see you next time on Damien After Dark. See ya.